geef hem nog één dag een applaus en haal hij die tenen voor niemand meer dan een Socrates. Je kan wel net naar de neer. Keep it going naar de neer, ik ga hem zien. Let's see what you do. Let's all get settled back in. Let's see what I do. Who had a great death 2022? Yeah, not me either. So I've been living here since uh, 2009 and uh, trying to learn Dutch. That's a really good town. And uh, last year I had the opportunity to learn a word I'll never forget. That word was aangereden. Uh, and then I was aangereden door the scooter klotsen. <laughs> yeah, so I'll never forget that particular word. And I've been living it for a while, because this was back in March. And uh, they uh, took me to the hospital, you know, the house of Panacetamol. <laughs> With this one here, a little easier. And uh, basically, I landed on my shoulder. A uh, car was driving on my feet's pad, and uh, the scooter oak was on the feet's pad. And I understood what it meant, and I thought they would understand what it meant, but apparently they didn't. And so I tried to explain it to them, but I didn't have a lot of time, so all I could say was, ah! <laughs> and then I went flying through the air. That was great, so the flying part. The landing? Not so much. I landed like a squid. Exactly. And so they took me to the hospital, and in the ambulance, they actually offered me fentanyl. I told the guy, I'm a nerd. Don't tease me. Give me the heroin. <laughs> but they uh, took the fentanyl, because I'm not a fool. And I got to the hospital, they took an x-ray of me, and she came back and said, would you like some morphine? It's not a good sign. Because, you know, they didn't have the kaika. You know, a little tiny look. Call it a glance. My arm's broken. I wanted more of a stare, you know. But they came back and they offered me what they call uh, conservative treatment. You know, they did nothing. <laughs> I got the blue strap with the Velcro. You know this thing? So they said, it goes good. It's not a useful medical diagnosis, you know, or a prognosis. It comes good. It's cheap. It's easy. It's optimistic. It buys you some time. But other than that, I think it comes good is only useful as a Yelp review for like a sperm donor. <laughs> so they gave me some more morphine and sent me on my way with oxycotton. So all in all. The drug part was good. The treatment was a little on the short side. You know, it was it was efficient. You know, it's like German efficiency versus Dutch efficiency. It's like the Germans would have fixed me and sent me back to work. And the Dutch did nothing whatsoever. Because it was financially efficient. And well, time passed and uh, I'm trying to keep my arm loose. And uh, they told me to exercise it. So I'm in my backyard trying to scratch my arm. And I'm getting a bad vibe from my neighbors. And he doesn't want to work this one. And I wave it to him. Finds out they, they thought I was a Nazi. I tell them what's wrong with me. Now they think I'm practicing to be a Nazi. Which is not any better. And I said to the doctor, hey doc, you know, it's not coming good. I can't get my arm any higher than this. I have arm erectile dysfunction. <laughs> And the first step in coming good is getting it up. And that's about it, without help. You're not getting a second date on that. And uh, he said, hey, Lars and Pentecost? <laughs> Which I would normally explain, but I think you guys know. Uh, not a useful, uh, helpful saying exactly. It's even less useful as a medical diagnosis. And, uh, I think the reason that Helas Pindicast is such a popular saying is because it rhymes, you know. And the Dutch, you guys love a good rhyme. We all love a good rhyme. My favorite rhyming one is Nogan in the Kogan. 
Now, of course, we don't know this means fucking in the kitchen. And I was here like three months, and they taught me nothing to come in. They didn't show me. It wasn't demonstrated to me, but I was taught it. And I had no idea how do you use no the coconut in context. It's never came up yet. I get Halas Pendicast. I've experienced Halas Pendicast. But I think if you combine Halas Pendicast and no in the coconut, you end up with sauté sauce. <laughs> At least I think that's the origin story, I'm not sure. So I went back and I explained to them that, you know, I would like a little bit better than this. And they said, okay, we'll go the opposite extreme. And they took a bone from a dead Dutch person, wherever you were, and they put that in there, and uh, 12 screws, and chopped a piece out of my leg, and put the marrow in there, the bone in there. And uh, now I can't walk. Which turns out is another Dutch word, which is, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I experienced that word very well as, as well. Uh, it's a strange word, uh, especially for you know, outlanders. Outlanders, it's a word we don't quite understand. But you have to, you know, you experience it. If you ever go out with a Dutch person, you will hear that word, as you all know. And it's worst times to hear it. I think, though, it's like uh, one of the worst times is just before sex. <laughs> still better than hearing it after sex, <laughs> as far as I know. I don't really remember. Yeah, I just turned 57, 75 as you also. Which is, I think, more accurate, you know. So I've been, uh, I've been trying to get, uh, you know, healthy. You know, I went to the gym to pump some iron. Well, you know, as the young people would say, we were saying, you know, sir, please stop staring at me. No. <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, I'm in a shape, you know, I want to get in shape, you know, I'm in a shape, but it's the shape of pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, as you get older, your life, you go through changes, it's like when I was younger, you know, we all have, like, our emoji, you know, your personal emoji, you know, I wanted to be the gorilla, it's not the emoji, you know. You know, when I was getting older, and I realized it's more like the rhinoceros, you know, because it's a bit fatter, but still strong. I'm a horn to be proud of. <laughs> but now I'm getting older than that, and I realize it's becoming more of the, the elephant. Because I'm even fatter and slower, and my trunk's just dangling down. <laughs> What's next? The hippopotamus? All but no trunk? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I used to think of him as Mr. Johnson, William Johnson, Willie to his friends. As I've gotten older, I realize that Willie's not necessarily his name. Could also be a question. <laughs> Willie? <laughs> Willie! <laughs> <laughs> so is anybody religious? There's a big religious crowd here at the bar. I thought that's how you want to get it. You understand what I'm talking about. I'm not really religious, uh, especially now. Uh, I wasn't really raised religious. I mean, I'm Greek Orthodox, but that wasn't a real big deal. They put me in a bowl and a priest poured olive oil over me. To be honest, I could have been a salad. <laughs> but at raised in America, you know, we have TV, which is what raises us. And I learned the gist of religion from television. Uh, which is basically that God knows everything because God made everything because God has a plan for everything. You're agreeing. I don't like the plan. I didn't mind it before. The worst thing about this plan is because God knows I didn't want any of this, you know. I mean, God made it happen for some unknown reason. And apparently God's plan was for me to hate the plan and get all pissed off about it. I don't get that. Should I pray? Doesn't he know? Too religious. I get it. It's cool. I used to be a, uh, well, I wanted to try to change my life, you know, as far as religiously goes. I joined the Jehovah's Witnesses at one point. Well, I thought it would open doors for me. <laughs> yeah, so I am a Greek. My father's, my family's Greek. And uh, it's weird. People ask me if this is a gimmick. My name being Socrates, it's my middle name, it was my grandfather's first name. 
And uh, the R thing, they asked me, that this is a gimmick too. It seems a strange gimmick to go ahead and have surgery. The Oxycontin, worth a gimmick, I think. But, so as a Greek, you know, people don't, they don't see the world the same way an ancient, you know, people do. It's like they complain about Joe Biden and Donald Trump, you know, presidents, we call it. And uh, I don't think people understand the whole situation behind politics itself. But politics, of course, it's a Greek word, if you don't know it. It comes from polys, which means many, and ticks, a blood-sucking parasite that spreads diseases. <laughs> it's politics. <laughs> Makes you feel better, though. You understand that, right? So, in, uh, in closing, I would say that uh, the drugs are good and helpful. Uh, being hit by a scooter is very bad. Try to avoid it if all possible. And the one word I think that I like the most that you know, the Netherlands has, uh, and it's not the, the word that people think of, which is swaffle. <laughs> and again, I was here in 2009, and they were still talking about that. The word of the year, 2008. You all know what it means. But the, the best word, of course, is kazala, which is like what this is itself. You know, it's a great, wonderful evening. We all come together, little bar, people talk. We laugh, we have fun. It's a pain still. So for me, thanks so much for everything. Thanks so much for Kazal Keeping. Thank you much for the Netherlands. Get for the uh, hospital signal. See you soon. Bye.